Hey, I'm being really honest. I am breaking down the top five reasons that Christian men will ghost you or not reply. Let's get right into the material. All right, this is just a personal <laughs> experience why I have ever ghosted a woman or not replied to something, even though Christian man might be showing interest in you or you think it's going great, and then boom, they disappear off the face of the earth. <laughs> it's very immature, um, but I will just be honest and like straight up of like, hey, um, this is what I have done or experienced, and it may be relatable to you. All right. All right. So let's start with um, number one. You will not know this, <laughs> but the Christian men in the comments will definitely appease this. Um, a Christian man might ghost you or not reply or disappear because of conviction. You will not know this, but <laughs> a guy might, and this is a very immature man, or it might just be a man that is bored or susceptible to loneliness. So if a guy is um, sliding in your DMs or talking or flirting, it may be, and this is completely honest, he may be bored or he may be lonely, right? And so with Christian men, you always have the Holy Spirit. You always know what the right thing is to do and what the wrong thing is to do. And sometimes you ignore him and that's called sin and rebellion. And what happens is eventually you come to the end of yourself. You read more of their Bible, you pray more, and then conviction comes, and then you just disappear. You don't tell people what is actually happening of like, eh, when I was talking to you, I was in sin, and now I'm out of sin, I'm repentive, now I need to cut this off, right? And so, unfortunately, people are the casualties of this. And so, um, there's a verse in Song of Solomon, um, chapter eight, verse four, it says, daughters of Zion, do not awaken love before it's time. And so I'm reading this verse and the Holy Spirit is telling me, don't you awaken love in my daughters before it's time, right? And so I've tried my best to not um, lead women astray when it comes to flirting. Even if you're not, you know, having sex outside of marriage or fornicating, all that stuff, it's still emotionally irresponsible to just lead people on. Like you could do it in like... <laughs> with, um, you know, like job applications, right? You'll be applying to a job and you know you don't want that job, right? <laughs> but you want the money, you want the salary and you apply and you're in the interview and they're talking about all of the requirements and the skill sets and the responsibilities. And you're like, I don't want this job. And they ask you at the end, do you want this job? And you're like, yeah, I want it. <laughs> and then you don't get the job. You're like, yo, what happened? <laughs> um, you're going after something initially that you know you do not want, right? Um, but sometimes you're in the flesh. And so that's the number one reason a guy might uh, ghost you. He is in the flesh when he is sparking the initial interest, but then he repents and then he's like, ah, this ain't it, right? But um, it would be great if men verbalize what's happening, but not all the time do they do this. So that is number five. Number four, reason that a man might ghost you or disappear off of the face of the earth. This is very carnal. <laughs> it is very awful, but it's just a reality, right? He might actually get what he wants. And this sounds so awful, but sometimes we do this um, in life, right? You know exactly from the start, this is not going to work, right? And so when you're like, man, maybe I need to be more gracious, more forgiving, more patient, you actually begin to tolerate things that you know is not going to lead to marriage. So unfortunately, sometimes people are actually casualties to people being immature, right? So if you're unaware, right, as a man or even as a woman of like, man, this is actually what I want, right? But you're not finding it um, in your community or on social media. You might actually settle being like, man, this person doesn't actually exist, right? So you humor and tolerate and entertain um, people who's like, oh, I'm going to try to make this work. But unfortunately, that day actually comes where you find what you actually like, right? And a person is still a casualty of you being like, oh, this is actually what I want. I didn't want this in the first place. I'm dipping, I'm out. And so unfortunately, if people aren't mature, they're not going to communicate or convey that this is what happens. And so, yo, I think that's just a real thing of like, man, uh, 
I don't know if sometimes our desires do have to be sanctified and crucified by Christ to be like, man, uh, all my stuff that I want is actually very carnal. It's very dumb. It's very worldly. It's very materialistic and it's very shallow. Right. But sometimes people get their shallowness <laughs> and then they dip. And so unfortunately, you are the byproduct of that. So that is another reason that a Christian man or whoever will go shia. They got what they actually wanted. All right. Number three, why people ghost. I don't think people say this often enough. Sometimes your personality and your conversation is whack. It's awful. I'm just saying this straight up. Sometimes you're legitimately trying to pursue a Christian woman and you're, I don't like this term, but it's the best I'm going to use. You're testing the waters to be like, man, how do our personalities uh, match? Vibes are very carnal and they're whack because they're dumb. <laughs> but you're checking out um, the connection or the vibes or um, the interaction, right? And it seems as if Christian women are terrible at this. It seems like when Christian women come out the world, they only have like worldliness and sensuality to be able to have a relationship. And so now that they're no longer able to have um, sensuality and sexual prowess to make connection, they have no personality at all. And it's like... Bro, you are in Christ. You are more than your sexual experience. Or sometimes I'll just, I will make a, a way for this. Maybe people are shy, right? But it's really unhelpful when a man is carrying the bulk of the conversation. Um, even if you are interested, it makes it as if I'm like, oh man, she really is interested. Bro, I think she found this. <laughs> I found this out very recently. Apparently, a woman could be interested in you and be giving you the hardest time. I'm talking about leaving you on red, uh, the conversation whack. Like she might actually be fooling with you. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. All right, so definitely hear what I'm saying and don't read into this what I am not saying. I'm actually not saying that women should put themselves out there or pursue men. I think that's worldly, I think that's carnal, I think that's really dumb, right? But if there is a guy that you are interested in and you do want to show mutual interest, reciprocity, right? So um, return the conversations or, I mean, sometimes people are oblivious of like, man, I didn't think he was interested in me. I've seen it myself. I was like, what? She actually down for the boy? <laughs> so sometimes it is hard to read between the lines and I don't think women should help men pursue them. But I do think y'all need to be aware of like, man, it does take like a lot of boldness and courage to pursue a woman and put your heart out there and put your affections and feelings out there. And so um, maybe humor or entertain the situation if you are hearing from the Lord, right? Because I do think that American dating is really dumb and it actually makes room for a lot of prayerlessness and biblical illiteracy, right? You have men and women who are not hearing about, from God about who their wives and who their husbands are casually dating or entertaining or courting. And because of that, you have a lot of damage in the body of Christ because brothers and sisters are dating one another and that's dumb. Um, but um, if you are seeking the Lord, I do think that you need to at least help the guy <laughs> with maybe a smile, a joke, feeling his muscles. <laughs> I'm just messing. But I will say it is a little encouraging when it happens. <laughs> Call him handsome. Um, but that's only if he's actually pursuing. A lot of men do not pursue. So I don't actually think women should put themselves out there to be looking dumb. Um, we don't want to be looking dumb. <laughs> so um, that's number three. Um, sometimes, yo, your personality might be whack. You, you might need to be a little more extroverted, friendly, because it says um, he who shows himself friendly um, will have friends. And so it's like, hey, um, it just talks about like the attributes of a really good spirit, like being meek, humble. Um, this is Titus 2, a Titus 2 woman, great woman to be. <laughs> All right, number two, <laughs> reason that a Christian man might ghost you or disappear off the face of the planet. This is a really whack 
reason, but it's kind of legitimate, right? Something unforeseen has happened, right? Um, sometimes men do not know how to verbalize or process or communicate unforeseen, unfortunate circumstances, right? So um, you're planning to take out a girl and you lose your job or you get in a car wreck. Well, something like actually like kind of like shameful happening where you would not want to tell the girl because it may discount you as like a man or a provider or a spouse or a mate, right? And so you need to, or sometimes it might even be like something emotional, right? Of like, maybe you lost a loved one um, or you got broken or something, something happened, right? That you are not in the same position as when you conveyed interest, right? And so there's an amazing book, it's called Love and Respect, right? So the Bible calls men to love their wives and women to respect and honor their husbands. And so sometimes if men are not able to properly convey or portray their emotion, what they go into is like solitude or seclusion because um, venting your emotions out on other people is, I, <laughs> I think a lot of men perceive it as disrespectful of like, man, I'm not about to ruin your day with all the stuff I'm going through. So people usually turn inwardly, right? So you might do that through Bible study, prayer, isolation. Sometimes, So sometimes it's healthy and sometimes it's unhealthy. You have to navigate that. Um, but um, that's just the reality of that, right? So sometimes men do not convey something discouraging happening where it's like, man, I don't want to look bad. But hopefully <laughs> if a guy did tell a girl like, hey, this is what happened, um, it would weed out really good candidates versus really trash people of like, man, yo, you got to be with me for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, for health and um, sickness. Like this is literally the vows you have in marriage. But it's a little hard to ask that uh, while dating or showing interest because usually most of these people are strangers unless they are in your local community. So that is number two, um, trying to process something internal. All right, number one, or just simply the last reason that a Christian man may ghost you. I would say this is different than the uh, number five. I think sin, and <laughs> this is just a reality, right? Um, it says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, but it does say that there is a conviction of the world that leads to death, and there's a conviction of God that should not be repented of, right? If you're living some type of lifestyle that you shouldn't be, right? And you are um, in sin, like actively in sin. So there could be actually a lot of things, right? Um, maybe you're gambling or investing your money, losing your money. Maybe um, it is actually a sexual sin and you're a fornicator, right? Um, a Christian man um, actually feeling like shame or maybe they lied, like... Sometimes it doesn't it doesn't have to be like really high stuff, right? This is actually pretty interesting, right? If there is some type of I don't want to call it guy code because we don't operate to the ways of the world, um, but we are like transformed by the renewing of our mind, right? But if there is some type of I guess it's like falling away from Christ, right? A guy might seclude if he is viewing the relationship like being out of order or becoming like an idol, right? So sometimes it's hard to navigate um, when something is of God and you just need to reposition and get yourself back into alignment, right? So a guy might be like, man, I really do want to do um, ministry. I really want to be um, active in my local church. I want to serve the Lord, a very like pure and sincere heart. But um, he's not seeing, right, how you are fitting into that scenario, right? And so if anything is detracting from like his walk of God, it's like, man, I really like this girl, but we can't get on the phone a really long time, <laughs> right? Um, there will be a conviction that will come unto him where it's like, man, I don't know if this is God. It can legitimately be God, but sometimes, um, and this is unfortunate because James does say a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and he will receive nothing of the Lord. Um, but um, it says in all you're getting, get wisdom and get understanding, right? So you need to have like, I guess it's just a spiritual maturity level to know like, hey, this is actually of God and you're fine versus like God saying, no, this is not it. So if there's any lack in his prayer life, his service in ministry, 
if he feels distracted or um, just emotional attachment where it's unhealthy, you could perceive something as healthy being unhealthy, right? And you think God is not in it. He could be in it the entire time. So navigating the self, um, the person, right? Crucifying the flesh daily, I think is a big um, mark. Or also um, when it comes to like conviction, right? None of us will know this stuff. Uh, we don't operate under the ways of the world or like guy code or nothing. But whatever like another dude like likes you or shows interest in you, right? So I know I've been um, subject to this of like, man, I'm praying, <laughs> I'm hearing from the Lord and um, I like a girl. And one well, of my friends like a girl too. He's not praying. <laughs> I'll tell you right now <laughs> um, because I've seen him jump from girl to girl, right? Um, but um, again, that actually should be a rebuke <laughs> on his end where it's like, bro, you shouldn't be jumping from girl to girl. Um, but if we have a really good relationship, it's actually pretty childish. It's like elementary school, whoever gets like dibs first. But um, it's just it's just honest. It just is what it is. Um, the Christian community is very small. So um, really good Christian men, um, they're pretty selective or they're pretty, they hold a good name um, above everything. It says like, in Proverbs, a good name is worth like more than like rubies and diamonds and gold and stuff like that. So I don't want to be out here like a player or breaking up homes or whatever. So I think that's like the two like number ones of like, man, um, conviction um, in some type of relationship scenario, either the relationship between a Christian man and God or a Christian man and other Christian men. So I think those are the top five reasons that a Christian man will ghost you. And so um, comment below, uh, <laughs> has any of this happened uh, to you? Or if you're a Christian man, um, tell your experience with um, dating. Dating is pretty sucky, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. But um, through prayer and reading your Bible, the Lord will reveal to you who your husband or wife is, right? So uh, make sure to join our Bible study at theblessedreport.com. It's in the description box below. And also like, comment, share, and subscribe. And click the next videos where I'm talking about how dating in Western United States is awful and it's not biblical. And also I'm showing to everyone how to find their spouse. Thanks for watching.